talking about. God, there is this um, CBN. That's what I was told. Yeah, he said CBN has set maximum number transfer via mobile phone. Uh -huh. We'll look at that. Okay. Then. Glad to have you join us on Wednesday's edition of Business Nigeria. I am Tolu Lokpe Ogunjobi. Welcome. Well, let's look at stories making headlines in the world of business before we move to other trusts for today. First, the Central Bank of Nigeria says more than 31 million customers have been captured in the bank verification number. That's to address the absence of a unique identifier in the banking sector. The CBN and the Bankers Committee launched the BVN project in early 2014. CBN's Director for Banking Payment System, Dakbo Fatokun, says the BVN was part of the federal government's strategy towards accelerating financial inclusion in the country. According to him, the verification number has helped to increase our deterrent controls on financial transactions and reduce fraud risk and identify uh, identity theft. So far, about 44 million accounts have been linked with the bank verification number initiative. The central bank has again released its monetary credit foreign trade and exchange guidelines for 2018 and 2019 fiscal years. Uh, that was released last week. While well, raising its money supply growth forecast for 2018 to 10.98%. Very impressive. Well, the Apex Bank had earlier projected a money supply uh, growth of 10.29%. The bank says it will retain monetary policy framework as its strategy for the 2018-2019 fiscal year are complemented with appropriate exchange rate regime. The CBN added that it would adopt a proactive monetary policy stance while open market operations will remain the major liquidity management tool during the two years. Well, all of that said, I have a research analyst in the house with Afri Invest Securities, uh, that um, Omotola uh, Bimbola. He joins me now live to discuss, look at all of these issues and, and more, of course. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. First, let's start with the Central Bank projecting money supply growth to 10.28%. Uh, That's for 2018-2019. What could be responsible for this um, bold step? Um, I think uh, money supply first is a type of monetary aggregate. And um, for Nigeria, it's typically driven by changes in both net foreign assets as well as net domestic credits. Okay. Uh, now, in the last two years, we have seen net foreign assets growing quite rapidly, partly driven by the impact of devaluation on Nigeria's foreign, uh, foreign currency assets, mm -hmm. both the ones owned by the central bank, by the sovereign, as well as uh, domestic corporates. Um, now, this time around, um, okay, maybe to reflect further on that. While we've been seeing net foreign assets growing quite rapidly, net domestic credit growth has been a little bit constrained because of the slow credit growth to the private sector. Um, last year, private sector credit growth was, was almost flattish at about 0%, at about zero, zero percent, while uh, growth uh, to the, um, why growth in credits to the government, it has been increasing rapidly. But this time around in 27, 2018, uh, with the accumulation in external reserves, we try to see net foreign assets to continue growing, and we also to see net domestic credits to also increase in 2018, driven by the easy monetary policy outlook by the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, due to the gains we have seen in price stability as well as foreign exchange stability. Uh, it has increased the possibility, or let me say probability, of having an easy monetary policy. And so far, if you look at what's happening in the, in the, in the fixed income market, we have, yields, we have seen yields come down significantly in the past three to six months. So what that portends is that uh, ba banks and other credit intermediation um, agencies or institutions in the country would have a much more uh, robust credit, uh, credit growth outlook. In fact, in our conversation with commercial banks in the last three or four months, in the analyst presentation, they've all been guiding towards a single digit to double digit growth in their loan in their in, the, in their loan book. So with the increase with the anticipated increase in credit to the okay. private sector, as well as increase in net foreign assets, I think the ten point nine eight percent position by the CBN 
is, is, is fair, if, if not so conservative. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it also signifies that the CBN also knows that the time has come to have a much more um, easy monetary policy going forward. Mm. Now, now I, I, I look at this line. The central bank says it will adopt proactive monetary policy stance while an open market operation that will be the major liquidity management tool Correct. during this two years. Now, yeah. the monetary policy stance, we've been on 14% NPR for how long? Uh, what do you make of this, of this line? Um, I think although we've been at 14% on NPR in the last two years or so, but the CBN has been using its OMO policy tool, mm -hmm. you know, much more frequently to control liquidity in the financial sector and also guide rates in the fixed income market. And they have been deploying this particular tool in the last six, seven months to guide towards an easy monetary policy outlook. Because if you look at the frequency of OMO auction, it has reduced quite substantially. Going at the days when we used to have three to four OMO auctions held in a week, now we barely have one or two OMO auctions held within a single week. And the fact in December, for a period of up to three weeks, we had no single OMO auction, which is the CBN is more biased towards an easy monetary policy. Um, also, um, the clearing rates at the home auctions, uh, they have reduced quite substantially. Um, at the beginning of 2017, uh, 12 months uh, home bills used to yield above 80%. Currently, they yield uh, less than 13%, you know, around 13.5 to 13% or thereabouts. So that shows that uh, both in terms of the frequency of home auction and also the clearing rates at the home auction, the CBN has an expansionary monetary policy. Uh, that they are that they're implementing currently and that is support growth because although we have seen the economy uh, recover from the recession we haven't seen so much of non-noise sector growth and non-noise sector growth is um, a lot dependence on both the ease of doing business environment it depends on uh, monetary policy it depends on fiscal policy dependence on oil and gas revenue so mm -hmm. with all these variables you know pointing upward uh, the CBN has been uh, more or less adopting an, an easy monetary policy in the well, near I, I think there is now this coordination between the monetary side and the fiscal side, rather than we used to have the challenge before now. Because I was also able to speak to the minister over the weekend, and she said the growth prospects for Nigeria remains very strong at this time. I don't know if um, you, you think otherwise. Uh, we share the same optimism. Uh, we expect growth in the economy to further expand in 20. Uh, in 2018 from the modest uh, uh, record in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, the IMF is projecting growth to be at 2.1 percent, but we're a little bit more, bit more optimistic than the IMF. We are forecasting growth to be at 2.6 percent mm -hmm. in 2018, uh, driven by both the oil sector and the non-oil sector. Uh, last year, the B, last year, uh, oil sector production is still lower than Nigeria's peak production level. So we think that as we gradually uh, f recover back to our peak production level for, for, for oil, uh, we should expect oil sector growth to remain robust in 2018. And furthermore, for the non-oil sector, uh, with the stability we are seeing in the foreign exchange market, you will see that from leading economic variables like the PMI, We've been, ex we've been recording mm. uh, successive expansion in both the manufacturing and non-manufacturing sector. So that should also drive the non-oil sector goal. And we also have some base, uh, some base factors that might also bias the number of support, particularly in the ICT sector, where, where there was a contraction last year because of the reclassification of the definition of subscriber numbers by MCN and some other telecom providers. So with that base effect, we're enough completely in 2018, which you see growth uh, expand in Nigeria around our target of 2.6% to 3% probably. That would be very good, at least to put food on everybody's table because that's what Nigerians want to see. We've gone out of recession, Indeed. we're moving ahead, but they, they send the figures, but Indeed. they really want it to, they want it, they want yeah, to see but, it practical. But, 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 but the word of caution, although we are growing currently in the country, the rate of growth that we are recording is still suboptima and mm -hmm. it is not enough to, re to lift the real income of people. Uh, Nigeria's population grows at about 2.7% annually, um, according to, to the World Bank. But currently, we are growing, even for 2018 targets, you know, if you take a consensus poll of analysts, growth forecast is between 2.1% to 2.5%. So clearly, we are recording growth, but the growth is not enough to increase the level of income, at least on a per capita basis, you know, going to individuals in the country. So we still need to see a lot more structural reforms to lift uh, the economic growth above 5% to ensure that we continue uh, recording uh, growth in per capita income. We gradually move 
from the lower income level that we had now to a much more uh, middle income classification. And perhaps in the next 10, 15 years, we can get to higher income status uh, by growing our GDP by, by double digits. It will be appreciated. But for that to happen, we need to see more structural reforms from the government, both on the fiscal and the and monetary, monetary side. side. Let, let, let's move away from, from let, let's look at uh, uh, the, the bond market now. I think lately government has also been looking looking at bonds, looking about what we've heard about the Sukuk and all of, all of it. Looking at the results we have, many say the confidence is now back in the Nigerian market. I don't know if you share the sentiments to that. Clearly, confidence is back uh, because uh, the demand, the level of demand we are seeing at bond auctions, it has risen quite significantly. And the demand is being driven by both our local institutions, particularly the PFAs and the banks, mm. and also the foreign investors as well, who are now um, a lot more open to investing in Nigerian securities. After, the, um, after we've recorded uh, a period of stability in the FX markets. Um, at the last bond auction that was held, uh, that was held last week, uh, the demand was above 250 billion naira, although only 90 billion naira was issued by the DMO. And we also saw um, a further decline in the yield at which the federal government issued the instruments. Uh, across tenors for the five year, seven year, and the 10 year tenors that were issued, uh, the yield, the marginal rates at, the, at, at, at issuance fell by about 68 basis points mm -hmm. compared to the previous auction held in, held in March. And the, the positive results that we achieved is a combination of several factors. Number one is the easy monetary policy outlook. Uh, the second one is the recent fiscal strategy by the federal government of reducing their dependence on the domestic markets for raising, uh, for, for borrowing and leveraging more on international markets. So we have seen the volume of, uh, the, we have seen the supply of uh, bonds okay. reduce significantly year on year compared to what we used to record. So with declining supply of bonds and significant demand, these are naturally, you know, trending downward in the fixed income market. And for banks or for other financial institutions, that shows that they will probably be looking more to grow their loan book to compensate for that decline in government securities. No, no, we, we cannot we cannot shy away from our forex market. I just saw a story, and I've also been going through. We're talking about the INE window experiencing some ups and downs. Now the CBN has continued to intervene. Talking about you know making um, letting us have a little bit of stability in the in the forex market. What's your assessment of how far we've gone? Yes, we know we've been over in between 360, 365. That's in the uh, black market, and I think uh, the bank rates. You know, what's your what's your take with regards to what's happening with the forex? Um, I, I think clearly by consensus um, estimates or forecast. Uh, the outlook for the foreign exchange market is broadly positive. Mm. And uh, this is due to the fact that uh, we are seeing recovery in the commodity market, particularly oil, Nigeria's you know, prime, prime yes. exports. So with the improvement in oil prices and stability in crude oil production, uh, our current account balance it has swung positive and it has remained so over the last five to six quarters. And the outlook is also very positive for the current account balance. And beyond the current account dynamics, we're also receiving lots of foreign portfolio flows which are coming back into the market because of the source of the high and high window and also the stability in the macroeconomic environment. And beyond that, federal government has also been issuing foreign currency uh, securities, which has led to accumulation of external reserves. So reserves are growing and uh, we are seeing stability in the oil market. So if you put these two major factors together, that shows that the CBN will continue to have enough ammunition or well, let me say enough reserves. That's a proper word. I totally word. agree. To, yeah, we in the <laughs> to, to fight back, but are we ready to to uh, in case there's any any shocks? Are we are we prepared to cushion any effect of any shocks at the moment? Well, maybe uh, I think there is still a bit of divergence of opinion mm. on whether we used uh, the uh, the period we experienced the perfect storm, the period of the period of challenges between 2014 and 2016 to properly make appropriate structural reforms mm -hmm. that will open up the economy long term. Uh, we did try a lot in making some reforms, but perhaps if we had done more by adopting a much more market-friendly you know, uh, foreign exchange policy and even um, uh, making reforms regarding his of doing business environments, perhaps we could say that uh, in the near term, the CBN would not have the need to be intervening in the foreign exchange markets again. But clearly, uh, in the near term, the CBN will still remain a very, very important um, agency in the management of the Nigeria's foreign exchange markets. There will still be 
a major uh, a major contributor to liquidity in the markets and but clearly in the net term at least they have enough capacity to defend the currency and we should see the currency remain stable I mean, well, let's quickly look at this um, central bank's directive talking about bank customers not being able to uh, transfer their mobile phones now, uh, talking about, uh, our, I think it's going to be pegged at 100,000 uh, Naira. I, what do you think about that? Um, I think that policy is uh, particularly um, speaking of the USSD channel for banking transaction. Um, in the past three, four, five years, USSD channel, it has become a very prominent uh, channel for financial, um, for financial services sector. Uh, both in terms of payments, uh, in terms of uh, transfers, in terms of checking accounts balance itself. Uh, we are now seeing more consumers uh, use USSD codes to be able to perform all these, um, all these activities. And we can associate the increase in the prevalence of USSD to the increase in the level of teledensity in Nigeria as well. We now have over 70 million uh, mobile phones in the country. Um, less than half of that are smartphones. So for them, they could not. There is no way they can access mobile money or land banking. But with USSD, even if you, even with your future phone, you can be, you'll be able to conduct banking transaction. Um, however, despite the source of the of the USSD channel for banking, there has been some concerns regarding the safety and uh, the security of this channel. And the CBN, in response to that, uh, they introduced uh, new policies to ensure a standardized way of regulating the sector. Mm -hmm. So they have pegged the maximum amount of daily transaction on the channel to 200,000. 200, and if you want to transact above 20,000 Naira and above, you'd have to use a second factor authentic authentication. That is, either use um, your um, uh, either your, uh, uh, a, a second way to verify the transaction okay. to the bank. Okay. So that's the latest policy by the central bank. And there are some upsides and downsides to this. F on the upside, it's going to increase the security on the platform. Okay. But on the downside, uh, because now the amount of money you can transact via this channel, it has reduced quite considerably. It could have uh, an impact on financial inclusion you know, in the short term. But I think on the balance of risk, um, it's a very good policy by the central bank. Uh, banking relies so much on trust, yeah. on trust and security, and the CBN has the, um, they have that objective to ensure that uh, the experience of customers using uh, any banking channel, either uh, through ATM, visiting a bank, online or USSD, that their interest is protected and they get the best service. So I think on the balance of risk, it's a very good policy by the central bank. Omotola Bimbola, our research analyst with Afri Invest Securities. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you on Business Night Show. Same here. Thank you. Well, let's take a break and we'll be back with more on the show. Stay with us. It's Business Night Show. We're glad to have you back on a normal day at this time on the show. We should be linking up live to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But like I said, little more uh, connections and technical issues. We'll be back better and stronger with feeds from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But let's tell you that Nigeria's manufacturing index expanded for the 13th consecutive month in April at 56.9%. In the Central Bank of Nigeria's Purchasing Managers Index for April, the index grew at a faster rate than in March. 12 of the 15 sectors of Nigeria's manufacturing sector recorded a growth for last month. Petroleum and coal products, electrical appliances and components, printing and related or support activities, including fabricated metal products, are the subsectors that recorded growth last month. But the cement uh, subsector remained unchanged, while the non-metallic minerals and primary metal sectors declined in April. Well, Nigeria will soon receive some, uh, some of its stolen monies. The country's Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, says the United States is finalizing plans to repatriate about 190 billion naira of looted money to Nigeria. The Attorney General says the technicality is involved in sending back the phones are being taken care of by officials of both governments. According to him, there is goodwill on the part of uh, both countries' presidents 
to have a roadmap for the repatriation of illicit funds and assets traced to the United States as proceeds of illicit, illicit transactions. Meanwhile, Malami says that 190 billion naira is only for the immediate repatriation, while there is continued effort to recover more. Well, the Obafemi Awolowo University Ileife Oshun State has been shot down over alleged uh, tax evasion. Well, the Oshun State Internal Revenue Service closed the school after it failed to remit more than 1.8 billion naira to the agency. The federal university and other establishments in the state were closed following the expiration of a seven-day ultimatum issued by the state government. OAUs on remitted taxes and development levy had become due and payable since 2015 and 2016. We locked OAU and they responded. But it's unfortunate that they pushed us to this level. Yes, the state has a very good relationship with uh, the management of OAU. And we expect the management to continue, with the to continue the dialogue. But unfortunately, they ignored us. And I believe that's too wicked of any organization to do. And that's why we have, gone, we have taken this step. Yes, Samia is not, is one of our contractors. And he's not the only contractor working for the state. Other contractors working for the state are actually doing and performing their obligations as at when due. Yes, they may claim that we are owing them fine, but we are saying that this is this is PE. They won't tell us they are not paying their staff. Even if they if they, if they want to say that that they are not paying their staff, what of what we had paid them? Government shifting focus to the non-oil sector there. Well, Oando PLC says it made 4.2 billion naira profit after tax in the first quarter of this year. The result came despite the ongoing Securities and Exchange Commission's led forensic audit into the affairs of the company. While well, in its upstream business, the company recorded a net profit of 8.6 billion naira, compared to 5.8 billion naira in the first quarter of last year. Uando's group chief executive, Wale Tinumbu, says the first quarter performance was due to a stable operating environment, continued incline in crude oil prices, on the highest level of compliance by member countries of the OPEC Accord. Before we go, let's tell you crude oil prices are the global market trade mix on Wednesday as Russia turns it back on China, the country's major customer. Well, at the London market, the barrel of the Brent crude trades downwards at $72 per barrel. OPEC basket bronze steadies at $71 per barrel. Well, that is a wrap on Business Nigeria for today. On behalf of the entire production crew, thank you for watching. I'm Tony Lockman. Ogunjali. Oh,